Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash entitled people. In today's episode, partner thought I should cancel a funeral so he could relax. Coworker claimed I made her fear for her life. Friend's boyfriend embarrassed all of us. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Partner thought I should cancel a funeral so he could relax. My uncle passed away unexpectedly in early June. No one in my family has the money to pay for a funeral slash burial at a church with a speaker. Since no one was expecting it, it's not like anyone was saving for it. Both of my grandparents slash uncle's parents have passed and his children are not successful. My uncle wanted to be cremated, but since no one has money we waited for his social security check to come in and the plan was to use that money to get him cremated. The first week after his death, my family all got together for nightly dinners and hangouts to keep the spirits up, share pictures, and celebrate his life. My partner and I have been together almost three years and been involved with each other's families, however the last year we've been on the rocks and stepping back. He did not wish to come to the family dinners and events but did say he wanted to come to the funeral whenever it was. Once the money came in, there was sadly some family drama. Pretty much all of us are wanting to have a get-together and spread the ashes off a bridge like he wanted. However it's been two of three times the date got cancelled. I've been keeping my partner up to date. Two weeks in advance I was told we were doing it the 20th. I tell my partner and then the night before I ask him again if he's wanting to come. It started a whole fight. His whole argument was so gross. Started with he wanted to sleep in since he's off. The funeral was at 11 am and he typically wakes at 5.30 for work. It was 10 pm. I see time to sleep in and go. Then it was his siblings are coming by and they planned it a week ago. This has been planned two weeks. Then it's my family can't get it together and he planned to go weeks ago. He shouldn't have to adjust his schedule for this. He's off work already. I was told I just don't get it that he works 14 hour days, but spends 5 hours of it daily swimming on the beach and watching TV or driving to and from home. He wants to stay at home because his legs hurt. I'd be driving to the funeral and it wouldn't be more than 2 to 3 hours. I was also told any other, he's, dated would cancel plans if it fell on an off day. I'm sorry that death is unexpected, but it's not my job or place to tell my family to reschedule so my partner can relax three extra hours at home. I just don't get it because, I, have a part-time job. This isn't like a party or something that really could be rescheduled or something where he is physically active. The entitlement is astounding. The funeral ended up getting rescheduled anyway by someone else, but I fear it'll happen again when the date's final. He wants out of the relationship, that's what all his pulling back means. He just too much of a coward to do it. He'd rather you broke up with him so he can get sympathy for how bad you hurt him. Talk to him but record it because he'll be telling people different. I also do have recordings of recent arguments including this one. We're li living together but like my post said we've been on the rocks for over a year. If anything it's been me not wanting to be with him due to these sorts of arguments. Does it really answer why you would refuse to go to a funeral for someone you claimed to care about and said you wanted to go? If the cremation was paid for with his social security check for the month he died, the SSA is going to demand those funds back. If someone has received their social security for the month and dies even on the very last day, the SSA pulls that money from the bank account. If it's gone, they file a claim against the estate or whoever signed the contract and paid with those funds, which didn't actually belong to the deceased. I'm sorry if no one told you that. I always make people aware, 
and if they are straightforward with me that there are no funds and are not a nightmare to deal with, we can do it for only what we have to pay other parties and just donate our own time. She's staying because she's also entitled. She's not interested in finding a different living situation because she's comfortable where she is. She just wanted a bunch of sympathy instead of real advice. Your partner is worthless and a huge A.H. Dump him. Also, I am sorry to tell you this, but it is illegal to cash a SS check made out to a deceased person and Social Security will demand a refund for the entire month in which he died. So try to find that much money from whatever goods slash funds he left. Coworker claimed I made her fear for her life. I've never made anyone fear for their life before cause I'm a patient, shy, introverted person and very nice to everyone I'm around, unless they step their boundaries, then I'll just use my words to tell them to back off instead of jumping straight into violence. The most I've done is raise my voice to get someone's attention, which resulted in me becoming exhausted for a while but got everyone's attention and I apologize afterwards for raising my voice. Now, for the story. I've been working a stressful shift 8-hour shift at Home Depot, I had opened that day and was moved around every hour because I was asked to cover for several cashiers so they could go on break, then when a different cashier Karen comes over to me and asks hey dragon underscore crystal can you stay and close, cause we don't have enough cashiers to work the closing shift. Now this cashier had been known to make other cashiers handle things she was supposed to handle and even disappear for minutes on end, backing up other cashiers break time or just hiding in the break room faking to lose track of time. Worst time was her picking up another cashier's shift, but didn't show up for the shift and causing our supervisor to call the other cashier to work her shift, this Karen also seemed to want me to cover all her shifts. Even if I had reached my limit, 40 hours, for the week. Me, sorry but I've been here since opening and reached my hourly limit, I won't be allowed to work any extra hours this week, also I have homework to handle for college as soon as I get home. Karen, but Sally, our supervisor, needs someone to stay until closing, you don't want to disappoint her do you? Me, no I don't want to, but I've already told you I've reached my hourly limit so I won't be allowed to work extra hours, maybe someone else can pick up the extra hours. Karen is ugh fine, Sally will be so disappointed that nobody is willing to stay for a few extra hours, don't blame me if you get called to speak with her later. Me, raising my tone slightly, I'm a part-time worker and already told you that I've reached my hourly limit, so don't be putting words in my mouth like you're my mom and trying to guilt trip me into working extra hours, when I know I won't be allowed to pick up those extra hours. Karen just rolled her eyes and walked away mumbling something under her breath, about 5 or 10 minutes later Sally walks out and stares at me for a bit, confused I asked if something was wrong. Sally, I'm fine, but did you say something to Karen? Me, I only told her that I couldn't stay until closing and that I reached my hourly limit. Why? Sally, while well Karen came back said that you had screamed at her and was throwing things around, before threatening to fight her if she didn't leave you alone, but it doesn't look like she's being truthful. Me, yeah unless I'm Supergirl, the only thing that's within reach is that forklift over there, but I'm still not staying until closing. Sally laughed at my joke and told me that she had already found someone who was staying until closing and she'll speak to Karen about her fib, Karen didn't speak to me after that incident and disappeared not too long afterwards, I didn't ask about what happened to Karen. Unless I wanted to lose my job, because it's stated in our contract not to ask why so and so was fired or laid off from work, but then again I'm not into spreading rumors and just stay out of other people's business. Note, I was told by Sally herself that if we stayed after our shifts, we weren't getting paid overtime, so why stay later if I wasn't getting paid for working it? My two cents, you handled that entitled person very well. There is no way a manager is going to believe an introvert screamed through things and threatened to fight someone over staying late or asking to work more hours. IMO, getting an introvert to that level would be something along the lines of a loved one being maimed or killed. I'm glad she moved on. Enjoyed the entitled people story. Thanks. I think Karen was assuming Sally wasn't going to check on me and just going to write me up or force me to work the extra hours, forgetting that there were cameras all over the store and would have checked the cameras. During the year that I worked there, 
I've never reached the point where I wanted to fight anyone, the most was raising my voice a bit but that's due to being annoyed by entitled people and co-workers or to get my point across when someone keeps repeatedly cutting me off. Note, I was told by Sally herself that if we stayed after our shifts, we weren't getting paid overtime, so why stay later if I wasn't getting paid for working it? This is untrue. You must, by law, be paid for all work performed, even if you weren't supposed to work overtime. The company can discipline you for the unauthorized hours, up to and including dismissal, but pay you they must. When I've already said no twice, I find no means no to be a useful response. Friend's boyfriend embarrassed all of us. This happened about a month ago but I occasionally still think about it. A friend of my mom wanted to have a birthday dinner at an Asian restaurant. We'll call him, Jay. Jay is very kind, sweet, and doesn't really like confrontation, this part is important. And so at this birthday dinner it was Jay, his boyfriend Redface, a couple of other friends, my mom, and I. The a Asian restaurant we went to was mainly a Thai place. Their food is fresh, really good, and customer service there is excellent. Well, while we were chatting it up, having a nice laugh, Redface already seemed a bit of standoffish when he ordered his drink. But I and everyone else pretty much brushed it off. With that being said, he only ordered alcohol and didn't want really want to eat anything. Like he didn't order his own food, but he did try some of the appetizer that my mom ordered and that was it. He just kept drinking. He also made it a point, a good three or four times, that he was paying for his boyfriend. Into which irked my mom a bit because she wanted to pay for him but ended up letting it go. When it came down to ordering, all of us had Jay order first and waited for his food to come out before we ordered. Unfortunately Jay didn't like the food but he didn't want to make a big deal out of it. Mainly because he also ordered sushi and really enjoyed that. However, Redface kept pushing it by saying if you don't like it, I will say something and you can order something else. So when our waitress came to check up on us, Redface spoke for Jay saying that he wanted the food to be taken back and that he wanted it off his ticket. Well, rules are rules, and not every restaurant is the same. At this one, they don't take food back nor do they take the food off the ticket, it has to be paid for. When the waitress explained that, he legit said well that's not how restaurants work. As he continues he's starting to get loud. He then asked to speak to the manager and lo and behold, our waitress was the manager. Again, rules are rules, sure it might suck, but it is what it is. So Red Face decided to go ahead and ask for the check and again, he had to mention how he was only paying for himself and Jay. Here's where I truly almost jumped across the table. Red Face paid and waited for his check to be taken back. Another waitress came over to clean up some of the plates and asked if he was ready to pay. He said yes, but that he wanted the manager to come and get it themselves. So the manager came over to get it and he threw the check at her. He ended up hitting my mom in the process. Everyone had to hold their composure because again Jay doesn't like confrontation. And because it was his birthday we didn't want to ruin it any further by getting into a fight with his boyfriend but you could tell he was completely embarrassed and on the verge of tears. Before that catastrophe I already didn't care for Red Face. But that really solidified it. Edit, this is to kind of add to my comment below. Again, I get that we should have said something. Again, we apologized to the manager and left a nice tip. With that being said, not everyone knows what the relationship is really like, including my mom, other friends, and I. So if someone did say something, who knows what would have happened behind closed doors. We're not with Jay and his boyfriend 24-7. If anything by seeing Red Face act like that, it should have been an opportunity for Jay to wake up. However, Jay knows we don't care for his boyfriend and doesn't really bring him around. And nobody said a single thing about his behavior which means he'll just continue to act this way. I never get that. The night is already ruined. The waitstaff won't remember one entitled asshole. They will remember an entire table dot of entitled ashiles.
Jay can't stand up dot or speak up dot for himself. Phone. Is the OP also non-confrontational? Is mom a mute? It's fine that Jay doesn't like confrontation. But this behavior is affecting other people. Jay doesn't like conflict so we let one dude spoil the dinner. Also, if someone at your table is rude to a worker and you don't intervene, you're an accomplice. You could have handled this so much better. I hope Redface is now an EX. I'd have apologized to the waitress slash manager at the very least and then let RF have an earful once we'd left. Where are these restaurants that you get a satisfaction guarantee on your meal choice? You order it, unless there is something wrong with it, you pay for it. You don't get a change of mind because you've suddenly decided you made a bad choice. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.